What's going on guys? I'm Big Worm 380. I hope everyone had a great Christmas and a happy new year. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Go XLR Mini. If you're a content creator or you're thinking of getting into content creation, the Go XLR Mini may be for you. I've had a few weeks with the Mini and I'm going to give you some pros and cons and my personal opinion on whether or not this mixer is worth a buy. Now if you're watching this review then I'm going to assume you kind of have an idea what an XLR microphone is. I'm not going to get too deep in the weeds on XLR mics versus USB and all of that. The quick version is, if you have an XLR microphone, then you'll also need some type of interface to take the mic signal and send it to your PC. Depending on the microphone you go with, you may also need some type of preamp to boost the gain on the microphone, which is basically the volume. Let's take a look at what my mic setup was before I got the Go XLR Mini. I did quite a bit of research and I finally decided on getting the Shure SM7B microphone. Now this is a great microphone, but this is one of the mics that you'll need a preamp for or else you won't hear your voice on your recordings or streams. So to do this, I got a DBX86S preamp and audio processor. This boosted the gain on the microphone and processed my voice audio in real time. Then I had to get the signal to my PC, so I got a Yamaha MG10XU mixer. Both of these pieces of equipment go for around $200 a piece. That's $400, not even including the cost of the microphone, which will vary from $50 to $2,000, depending on what you get. Now let's talk about the Go XLR. The original Go XLR was released at the end of 2018, and its little brother, the Go XLR Mini, just came out a couple of months ago in November of 2019. I was real interested in the original Go XLR, but the price was kind of holding me back. They're going for just under $500 on Amazon, which is pretty steep. The Mini, however, comes in around $250, and while that's not really cheap either, you'd be hard-pressed to find another single piece of equipment with all the features of the Go XLR Mini. Not to mention all the space you'll save compared to other equipment, such as the stuff I bought. Check this picture out. You can see the Yamaha mixer right here, and here's the DBX86S processor, and then here's the, the Go XLR Mini right next to those, and that takes the place of both those pieces of equipment. So here's what the Go XLR Mini looks like. There's four faders that you can use to change the volume on anything going into your recording or stream on the fly. Now they're labeled mic, chat, music, and system, but you can actually assign whatever audio you want to them. And each fader has its own mute button below. Underneath that, there's a bleep button that lets you censor your mic. This is kind of a gimmicky thing. I don't even really see myself using it, but it's there if somebody wants to. And to the right of that is a cough button. That'll mute your mic as long as the button is pushed down in case you have to cough or whatever. Say you, you, you got throat issues going on and you're clearing your throat, you can hit that button and you know people don't have to listen to that. You can see at the bottom of the front of the unit, it has two 3.5 millimeter inputs for both microphone and headset. And just a side note, you can actually use your Go XLR with a USB microphone as long as it has a headphone output like the Blue Yeti mic does. Moving to the back of the unit, starting on the left, you have the XLR input for your mic. Then there's a line in for devices like a phone if you want to listen to some music. The line out is used to run audio to a second PC if you have a two PC streaming setup, or you can even run it to some speakers. Then there's the USB connection that sends everything to your PC and powers the entire Go XLR Mini, so there's no power cable or brick to deal with. And on the far right is the optical input for your gaming console. I have my Xbox audio coming in through this and it works real good. So there's several connections to take advantage of, but how do you make it all work together? Well, let's take a look at the software. Okay, so here's, here's what the software looks like. This is the GoXLR app that you download from the TC Helicon website. TC Helicon is the manufacturer of the GoXLR. So uh, th I thought there was only one software and you might could use either one with both the X Go XLR and the, and the Mini also, but uh, there is two separate apps actually. So I, I downloaded the one for the Mini. So you can see over here on the top left, these are your profiles. Now the Big Worm REC, that's for recording. That's just my default setup for recording and I may set up a separate one because I may start doing some streaming you know, or whatever else you can make, I guess, as many as you want and you just save it and whatever one is checked, that's the one that'll, uh, every time you turn this software off or stop your computer and you restart your computer, it automatically kicks on and the last profile that was used will be checked. So one of the things that people were complaining about this thing, the original Go XLR, they had some growing pains as far as software and they've added, changed the layout a little bit 
and they were having problems with the profile saving, but they, they took care of that with, I think some of the, you know, one of the earlier updates to the original Go XLR. And I haven't run into that problem and I don't think anybody else is having it anymore either. So that's a profile that I made myself and uh, the red, teal, blue, vaporware, vapor wave, I'm sorry, and sleep, those all came on it. So those are just some default ones you can use if you want to. Uh, it, it gives you kind of a tutorial to go through. Uh, they, they have a lot of uh, videos, tutorials on YouTube on the TC Helicon gaming site. If you uh, get one of these, it's a good idea to go check those out. They got some pretty good tutorial videos to help you pretty much set up anything on this, from setting up your mic for the first time to, you know, everything. I'm just going to run through these real quick. So on the far left is the mic tab. Here's your mic setup. You do this the first time. Here's your noise gate. Uh, I'm not going to go through all these. I'm just showing you what it has. So the main settings are the gate. You got an equalizer and a compressor. But if you look, you can open each one of these up, and there's more options within. Okay. So uh, your equalizer, you've got all that. And the compressor. Uh, actually, that was already open. Uh, so, you, so you've got the compressor here. And then within that, you've got these other ones too. So you'll kind of go through these settings if you follow along with the, the uh, tutorial on the uh, YouTube page for TC Helicon. And they tell you all about these and what to do with them and what they recommend. Okay, so... Here's the uh, the mixer part. This is uh, this is where you set the volumes for all your different channels. Okay, now uh, <clears throat> you got four different channels you can set up, right? So you have on the Go XLR, like I said earlier, it says it's labeled above the sliders or faders, mic chat, mic chat, music and system, right? But you can change them to whatever you want. Just because it's labeled on the Go XLR, you can assign whatever you want to it. Now, I keep uh, I kept the mic and the chat the same because it's already labeled that, and I'm going to be using those for sure. Now, the music one I have, which is the third one over from the left, I, I put made that for console. And then the fourth one is system. So this is anything coming from my desktop, whether it's you know YouTube. Uh, watching a movie or my my games or whatever that that's the channel that that's on and then so within each one of these uh your source you pick your source and then you can pick a mute option so if you hit the mute button below the mic it says it mutes the source audio for on this fader to every output so in other words it's not going to go to any recording software it won't go to your stream it won't go anywhere it'll just mute it which is, you know, what you want. Uh, you can set it mute to stream, mute to voice chat. So you could you could actually be in chat with somebody and you could say something, uh, you know, hit the mute button and it'll mute it to the stream and you could actually talk and, you know, then, you know, however you want to do it. So there's lots of different ways to set this up, lots of combinations. Right now I've got everything just mute all because, um, you know, that just seems to be the one that works for me right now. And of course, this thing is RGB. I like green. That's what uh, the like the RGB stuff in my PC is. So I've got it set up for green. Uh, you can, I mean, you can set all kinds of different stuff up. I just kind of put it on green and went with it. Okay, here's the routing table. This is pretty awesome. Okay, if you're like me, you I, I've never I've always had problems with PC audio. I don't know why it's not that complicated, but it always seems more complicated than it has to be. And it always seems like Windows is like resetting defaults and, you know, it's just a pain in the butt. This right here simplifies it really, really big time. So right now, uh, I don't have anything. I have the console on broadcast stream mix just because, uh, because of the way I have it set up. Uh, but everything else is like, okay, so the mic... I, if you want to monitor your own mic, some people do that where you can talk in your mic and you can hear it in your own headset. I can't do it. It throws me off and then I can't, it just screws me all up. So I don't do that. But if I wanted to do that, I would click that. Then I could hear it in my headphones. If I was streaming, obviously I'd want to click that. But this isn't my streaming profile. It's not going to be. It's just for recording, so I don't have it on that. Line out, this is for... Uh, for that second PC that I was talking about, the, the line out audio that you would run if you had a two PC streaming setup. 
and chat mic. So this is my mic, so chat mic. And then you just go through the table and set it up and everything is, these are your inputs and these are your outputs and that's what routes everything. Now, just a side note, what I really also love about this, what they recommend is you set up, uh, see, I got my system settings going to my, go XLR, that's my main output. Now, what they what they say to do is, like, I've got, uh, do I have YouTube pulled up? Hmm. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to mute that. This is the Go XLR Mini uh, deal. So that's Google Chrome right there. So what I would do is my default system, but say I say, say I had it on something else, I could set that Google, the, the individual app, I, I could set it to any of these five. Look, there's chat, game, music, system, and sample. I can see you get five different outputs that you can use to route your sound in your PC. That right there is a game changer for me. It really simplifies everything. And th this allows you to, every game that comes on that you start, you can just go to the, the sound settings in Windows and assign it to whatever you want. And that's where it'll go. And it just works. So that's what I really like about it. And the last tab on the software, this is just the mic setup again, tutorial, support, software updates, stuff like that. Uh, analytics, global settings and you got your lighting tab again uh and this is for this is for the accents and different stuff like that see i haven't even messed with this one uh the only one i messed with was this one so i'll have to take a look at that one but yeah that's pretty much it i mean this is one of the this is one of the things that some people don't mind it like i don't mind having an app that has to run in the background this turns a lot of people off, actually. Some people don't like the idea of having to have a program running in the background. I don't know. It doesn't bother me. So that's that. Let's talk about the pros and cons, okay? So pros for me, uh, it's all in one. Uh, like I explained earlier, I got rid of two bulky pieces of, of equipment off of my desk, and uh, I don't have to worry about taking up plugs with them and all that. I mean... It's all it's an all-in-one unit. It does all the stuff that those other two pieces of equipment did, and it does it well. Uh, it's got a small footprint, like I said, because it's an all-in-one, and it's just a small piece of equipment. Uh, easy audio routing, that's huge for me. Like I said, I've always had issues with routing audio on PC for some reason or other. I just always have, and this, this thing makes it easy. TC Helicon offers great support. Okay, uh, they've got a Discord that I, you can join and you can go over there and ask questions before you even buy one. You know, and they've got frequently asked question sections. There's plenty of helpful people over there. And uh, from what I've heard uh, on a couple different people's videos that talked about it when it first came out and they were having issues and there were some dead, dead on arrival units, you know, which is to be expected. Um, man, they, they would overnight them. They would get on Discord, talk to one of the admins, and they'd have it the next day. You know, So it seems like TC Helicon's really in this for the long haul with this product, and uh, they seem like they have really good customer support. Now, as far as the cons, this one, the app has to be on all the time. That's, that's a con, I guess, not to me. I mean, to me, I'm, I'm indifferent about that one. That's just what people, some people say. They don't like it. You know, but as far as I'm concerned, it's not that big a deal. Uh, it has less features than the original Go XLR, but that's kind of a subjective thing as well. It doesn't bother me because the only thing that it doesn't have is motorized sliders to where if you change something in the software, the little sliders move with a little motor because it's bus powered and not wall powered. And it doesn't have the sound effects thing. The thing is, you don't need a separate piece of equipment when you can just download apps to do it. So at the end of the day, I think the Go XLR Mini is a hell of a good buy for the price. Even though, like I said, it is pricey at $250, but you got to consider what all you're getting for $250. It's going to be hard to, to get uh, or just a mixer and a processor and, and the key to it all. You can get cheap. You can get those two pieces of equipment cheaper than $250. The problem is going to be making it work with your computer as seamlessly as the Go XLR app works. And so that's, you know, for me, the simplicity of it and the all-in-one factor, 
Uh, I highly recommend this thing to anybody that's going to be getting into YouTube or streaming. Uh, this is the perfect thing. Now, it depends. Also, you got to look at your particular situation and your particular use case. You know, is is you, you can do the research on it. What I've talked about uh, is this enough for you? Do, you know, do you need something? Do you need more a uh, bigger mixer? Do you need more equipment? If you need more, then by all means, do that. But I think to start off with, and as far as I can see for the foreseeable future, uh, this is going to be enough for me. So, yeah, I give this thing uh, two thumbs up. Uh, I'd say nine out of ten, only because I haven't had it too long. So, but I've been using it a lot and haven't had any problems. So, you know, uh, I don't like giving ten out of ten because that'd be saying it's perfect, and I'm not going to say it's perfect. But yeah, uh, check it out, guys, and. Again, if you're getting into streaming or uh, YouTube or anything like that, check it out. It's a good piece of equipment. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I'll see you in the next one. Later.